Good morning. This is Judith Lay welcoming you to Manx Radio and to the podcast of this week's edition of At Your Service. Manx Radio. Just a couple of hours ago, two vans loaded with essential medical supplies and other aid items left Liverpool. A second consignment leaves early tomorrow morning and both are bound for the Polish-Ukrainian border. Volunteer drivers will cross six countries, cover nearly 3,000 miles and do it all in about five days. I bring you the full story on this morning's programme. And our music is from Alid Jones's album Blessings. Recorded remotely in studios around the world during the lockdown of 2020, it touches on a range of faiths, including Christian, Catholic, Muslim and Buddhism, through a range of hymns, texts and scriptures set to music. This duet is with Dame Judy Dench and represents Dame Judy's own Quaker faith. My life flows on in endless song. Above earth's lamentation. I hear the real, though far off hymn that hails a new creation. No storm can shake my inmost calm While to that rock I'm clinging It sounds an echo in my soul How can I keep from singing? What though the tempest round me roars I know the truth it liveth what though the darkness round we close songs in the night it giveth no storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock I'm clinging Love is Lord of heaven and earth. How can I keep from singing? How can I keep from singing? It sounds an echo in my soul. The blue above it, and day by day this pathway smooths. Since first I learned to love it, the peace of Christ makes fresh my heart. A fountain. Things are mine since I am his. How can I keep, How can I keep from singing? How can I keep from singing? Alla Jones is singing mixed with the words from Dame Judy Dench, who is a Quaker. Speaking about the album, Aled said, It's really been a cathartic experience for me. I've also learned that we are all so similar. We all share so much. The album was made in 2020 whilst we were in lockdown. So, Aled explained, the challenges of doing the recordings remotely in a way made everything more special. He said... When we look back on these times, we will remember how we all came together and achieved things we never thought we could. 
achieving things we never thought we could might also be said of the remarkable response to an appeal that was launched by the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Liverpool, of which the Isle of Man forms a part, shortly after Russia launched its first attacks on Ukraine in late February. The Archdiocese of Liverpool launched Hashtag Liverpool for Ukraine, and already the appeal has raised over £100,000 through individual donations and scores of fundraising events. The scenes of innocent people suffering also inspired a group of volunteer drivers to take a consignment of aid overland to Ukraine at the end of March. When they saw how desperately aid was needed, they vowed to go back. And on Friday morning, I was in Liverpool watching the vans being loaded, sharing in a time of prayer and blessing for the mission and talking to some of the volunteer drivers. Mike Sharkey is part of Greenmount Projects, a Wigan-based company that regularly provides building and property services to the Archdiocese of Liverpool. And this is a return trip for Mike, who took the first consignment of aid just one month ago. Yes, we went uh, a number of weeks ago, contacted by the Archdiocese, who we do work for, and with, with help from, from some Wigan institutions, namely Wigan Lee College, Wigan Council and the NHS, all came together to assist with the Archdiocese to take humanitarian aid to the border. You're talking about the Wigan area, so that alone has, has brought in about £12,000, is that right? Yes, th those three institutions and, and ourselves, Greenmount Projects, uh, we, we've had some fun runs with the college, council have, have donated, through different appeals and NHS have, have given us much needed medical supplies so that's been fantastic it's it's obviously linked in with the archdiocese and with the the parishes the local parishes throughout the the archdiocese who have, have uh, donated toiletries sanitary products baby necessities all absolutely needed for the refugees in Ukraine tell me a little bit about you why are you doing this, Mike? Why? I am a practising Catholic. I go to St Mary's and St John's over in Wigan. We do work for the Archdiocese and we've got some close links with the, with the Archdiocese. And thought, you see it on television and it doesn't become real. Reality set in when I got the challenge to, to take a, a two, two vans, Father Sean Riley, to the Archdiocese. Uh, we got together and put a plan, hatched a plan. Unfortunately, I was one of the one of the drivers. Silly enough, I'm going again, so I don't learn. <laughs> the trouble is, when you hatch a plan, you generally find that you're in the centre of it, don't you? Uh, absolutely. It's it's been crucial to have a plan and the strategy to move forward and to take these aids across. It's something that we we felt passionate about, uh, and not just humanitarian aid, but we took the Archbishop's blessings and thousands of prayers from all the parishioners of the the, the Liverpool Archdiocese. And, you know, that is so important. Of course, the practical things are needed, but it's that prayer support because the prayer support is something everybody can do. Yeah, absolutely. The power of prayer. There's nothing better than the power of prayer. Now, it must be a pretty tough journey. What did you see when you got there on your first trip, Mike? We undertook the trip with four local Wigan lads. We're all mates. David Lyon from the council, uh, Chris Joint and Andy Cole, who works alongside myself. So it was a, it was a good close-knit team. Probably difficult for the countries that we visited to obviously be talking to Wigginers, we're not they're not the most articulate to be honest. They thought we were really foreigners, but I think I think the main thing is it, it was it was the need it was for us it was it was driving on and, and, and the need for the, for the Ukrainian people and we, we got to speak to Bishop Gregory. We heard for first hand what actually went on and what's going on, the atrocities and, and the refugee stories. We got that first hand. So I think on the way there it was all of the apprehension of getting to the border. When we got there, we had the uh, the connection and the the engagement with these people and then leaving back to get back to Britain it was that joyous feeling that we'd, we'd done it we'd, we'd, we'd given the, the aid over and in some ways in small ways we're helping these people in, in their hour of need. You're targeting this you're taking it to people who know exactly where it's going to hand it over to people who are at the cutting edge that's quite a satisfaction isn't it? It is and, and ultimately it's two archdioceses working together it's the Liverpool archdiocese over in, in England and it's the Ukrainian archdiocese who we've got that direct connection with. We've had specific talks and conversations, what specifics they need, and the strategy this time has been to take specific needs, which they're crying out for. So medical aids, unfortunately, we've had to take this journey 
just to put it into perspective, we're taking 750 body bags and that's what they've asked for. They need body bags, so obviously you can read into that what you want. It's not nice to say, but it's reality. It's reality of this war that, that, that's raging over in Ukraine. And we, we've got that direct contact. We're not just giving clothes, scarves, hats, gloves. It's specific needs that help these people now at, at the cutting edge. But yeah, it's, it's absolutely fantastic that we can assist. That was Mike Sharkey making his second trip with a van load of medical supplies destined for the most war-torn areas of Ukraine. David Lyon was on that first trip and shared some of his reflections. It was a memorable trip because I went with great friends. We set off with great hope to help in a in, in small way that we could in a devastating situation. And then the, I suppose the second memory is when we arrived there and seeing the, the joy on their faces of the support that we'd taken to them and, and the time that we'd taken to get there. So, you know, you feel like you're doing that, that little bit of good in the world when there was so much evil going on. Really pleasing that we could offer the support that we did and had the opportunity to do that because I think there's a lot of people in this world would do it would have done the same but it's having that opportunity to do it and we did through a group of friends through Mike whose faith is is evident for everybody to see and we was happy to support him as well as the archdiocese but it's a first journey for another driver Jill Boggan whose day job is director of finance for the archdiocese of Liverpool so what, I wondered, does this mission mean to Jill? I joined the Archdiocese three years ago and I feel very fortunate to have the opportunity to do something that's very direct and very useful to help people who are suffering in Ukraine. One of the things that you know, I have thought about and reflected on is when Pope Francis called upon people around the world, whether they were believers or non-believers, to find a strength to change the world and provoke a revolution. And that's a revolution of service that can be so powerful that it can overcome the dark forces that are in the world. And the generosity of people across the archdiocese is a signal that people are listening to that call to do something to help people who are suffering. I think you're absolutely right because they're talking very much about yeah. the cost of living rocketing, just the yeah. ordinary cost of living yeah. for families. Yeah. So the fact that people will give over £100,000 yeah. yes. in quite a short space of time. It is people very much going beyond themselves, not thinking about their own needs, but putting the needs of others who are suffering first. And I think that's a very, very big message to, to send out. And we've seen that right, you know, right across the Archdiocese and beyond. How do you feel now when you're about to get in the van and go off? Slightly nervous, but that's something that I can put to one side. You know, I just keep praying that we'll all be safe and get there and get there in time and keep up and so on and not let anybody down. That's the main thing. I can get over a little bit of nervousness to try and help people who are suffering. stronger than death. The living hearts we leave behind is not to die. I want everybody to remember because I can't forget. Let it begin with me. 
seems very appropriate to include that particular medley of music with Alad Jones singing with his younger self and including D-Day veteran Harry Billinge, who was 94 when that recording was made. Alad met Harry on Songs of Praise when the programme broadcast from Normandy and looking back on that, Alad said, Harry is a true inspiration for so many people. Hearing him talk about loss, I could never forget his words. I really wanted to record the moment the words, love is stronger than hate, I want people to remember because I can't forget. It's a message of our time. As the vans were being loaded on Friday morning, there was a time for prayer. Prayers of thanks for the generosity that has made these repeated relief missions possible, for the safe arrival of the vans at the Polish-Ukraine border, for those who will receive and distribute the aid where it's most needed in the worst affected areas of Ukraine, and prayers for all the people of Ukraine, wherever they are. The time of prayer was led by Reverend Canon Aidan Prescott and concluded outside with a blessing of the vans. Lord, we ask you to bless these vehicles, to bless the safe journey that they will make to the Ukraine border. We ask you to bless the, the drivers, the, the, the aid that that arrives there will express the, the love and the prayers of all the people here and we pray for their safe return and this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. That blessing was given by Reverend Canon Aidan Prescott, one of the senior clergy in the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Liverpool, of which the Catholic Church on this island forms a part. And Canon Aidan will be joining me on this programme in the coming weeks as we explore together the challenges of ministry in the changing face of the Church today. There's a significant Ukrainian community in Liverpool, and they're cared for by Father Taras Homich, a Ukrainian priest ministering within the Archdiocese of Liverpool. He was present on Friday, joined in the prayer service, and kindly talked with me afterwards. My name is Taras Homich. I'm based here in Merseyside. Uh, I live in Liverpool. Um, there is Ukrainian parish here. We worship in St. Oswald's Roman Catholic Church. This must be such a painful time for, for you as a community. Uh, yes, it still uh, looks and sounds very surreal that you, uh, Ukraine is at war. It's very painful for all of us. Uh, my parents live in Lviv, in the western part of Ukraine, and uh, they say it's relatively calm at the moment, but we know that uh, nowhere in Ukraine is safe. And I have parishioners from um, Kyiv, from capital city, from uh, eastern parts of Ukraine, and they are especially worried for their relatives who who live uh, there because uh, because of the military actions, heavy military actions at this point. So we, we all are worried, pray for our families, for our relatives 
but also we don't want to simply observe what is going on. We raise awareness of um, what is happening. We make collections here, and uh, I'm so grateful for for the local community, which uh, gathered, made different donations, collections, uh, offered uh, their homes, uh, opened their hearts to Ukrainians. So we are extremely grateful for all these expressions of solidarity with Ukraine. What I hear from from Ukraine, from my relatives and uh, also from those who are in touch with the soldiers, they say that soldiers uh, really appreciate all this prayer. They feel, if you like, um, this uh, power of prayer and they they say that uh, it's it's very, very powerful. They can resist this aggression uh, thanks to uh, to so many prayers as well. I think the thing that has touched everybody since the moment that these hostilities began was the courage of the Ukrainian people. Are you naturally a courageous people? Uh, Ukrainians um, in their history, at least uh, in the last four or five hundred years, um, they uh, never attacked other countries, but they always had to protect their territories. Uh, so they defended uh, courageously their families, their homes, their land. That's what they are doing today. So I think we have long history of uh, battles with, with neighbors uh, and um, we always try to uh, protect, but we don't invade other countries. And uh, well, we, we, we are very grateful for all the support which, which is given because uh, on our own we wouldn't be able to, to resist this, uh, this aggression. Uh, if, if we compare uh, Ukraine and, and Russia, it's uh, so disproportionately, Russia is so disproportionately uh, larger and it has much more resources. So we are grateful for all the support which we can get now to resist this aggression. Uh, Ukrainians uh, celebrate Easter this coming Sunday, so today is uh, the Great uh, Friday. And obviously there are those parallels with the life of, of Christ, uh, the suffering which Christ uh, experienced uh, for... Uh, he was uh, blameless, um, but he still underwent these terrible sufferings. Uh, so the people of Ukraine, they also um, experienced this um, uh, unprovoked aggression. Uh, and um, they, they experience this suffering, but uh, they also know that uh, there is always this resurrection to which they are looking forward. Christ uh, suffered, but at the same time he assured his followers to be with them always. And people of Ukraine, at least those who, who are Christian, and they uh, they trust uh, God. They trust Christ that He does not leave them, and uh, all this support which they also receive is uh, also a kind of expression of uh, God's God's presence in in our life and uh, God's uh, support for for all of us. So we are very grateful for that, and we pray for our donors as well. Thank you so much. Thank God you bless much. you. Wisdom flows from the high 
highest source I salute that source in you Let us work together for unity and love Unity and love from Aled Jones, Howard Goodall's Loving Kindness, from Aled's CD, Blessings. And before that, I was talking with the Father Taras, a Ukrainian priest ministering within the Archdiocese of Liverpool. And I recorded all those conversations at the Archdiocesan offices in Sefton Park when I was in Liverpool on Friday morning. And that's almost all that we have time for today. So let's finish with a look at our notice board. This evening, the Mariners will be in Abilands Chapel for an evening service at half past six, at which Jane Main will be the soloist, Mrs Olive Dobson will be the organist, and I have the privilege of delivering the message. As usual, it'll be followed by supper and community hymn singing, with a warm welcome for everyone. Looking to the week ahead, and on Tuesday the 26th, there's a coffee morning in Port Erin Methodist Church, open from 10 till half past 11. The Talis Consort is giving a concert on Tuesday evening at half past seven in St Mary's Roman Catholic Church on Hill Street here in Douglas. It's an evening of sacred vocal masterpieces from across the centuries and as with all services and events in St Mary's Church, that concert will also be live streamed. Go to manxcatholic.org and on the home page there's a button to easily connect with the live stream in St Mary's Roman Catholic Church. This Thursday, the 28th, it's time for Tea at Three, afternoon tea in the Sun Lounge in Balagheri. As the name suggests, it's served at three on Thursday afternoon, with a warm welcome for everyone. Next Saturday, the 30th, Ramsey Baptist Church invites you to their charity coffee morning for Ukraine. It's on Saturday morning in Ramsey Town Hall between 10 and 12 noon. Free admission with free coffee, tea and biscuits and your donations would be most welcome for Ukraine. There'll be guessing games with prizes, quiz sheets, crafts to buy and crafts to make. In fact, you'll find something for everyone to enjoy and all proceeds will go to Ukraine Relief. And finally, next Sunday, May the 1st, the Mariners will once again be leading a service. Next Sunday, they'll be in Bride Methodist Church, when Mrs Brenda Kinnish will preach and Ari Isinger will be the soloist. And supper and community hymn singing will follow the service. And that starts at half past six. And that's all that we have time for now. But I'll be back in the studio tonight from nine with Sundown, which will include a full report and lots of winning performances from a brilliant opening weekend of the Manx Music Festival, making a welcome return after its three-year absence. I'd love you to join me if you can. Please email me if you've got items for the notice board or if you'd like to request a favourite hymn. My address is judithlay at manxradio.com. So till whenever we meet again, this is Judith saying thank you for listening and I wish you and those you love a truly blessed week and a very good morning. The nations
Station, Station, Manx Radio.